Okay, hi everyone. Good evening. Welcome to today's workshop. So today is a React workshop. So you will be you will be coding to create a text evaluation program. So if you haven't already, please go to this URL to check in. And also the workshop instructions are here. It's hazy react workshop.web.app. So just open it and yeah, just keep it open during the workshop. And uh, first we will, I will introduce some background about like front-end web development in general, and then we will start coding for our project. So first let's take a look at what we will do today. So this is a text evaluator. So if you are familiar with text, it is an expression that we will use to write papers for like, STEM subjects. So basically, it's kind of a mass expression. And right here, and here we put this doing a preview of the latex, and then we we'll also evaluate the result. So this is the end product of this workshop. And first, I will introduce a little bit about front end in general. So first, uh, these are three major languages for front-end web programming. They are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML is used to define like what components appear on the web page, such as button, text, link, and it depends, it, it defines the skeleton of the whole web page. And CSS, which stands for cascading style sheet, is used to define styles, which includes colors, animations and some simple visual effects. And JavaScript is for everything that's dynamic, like how you interact with users, like pop up some window, or like handle, like when the user click a button to display something. So everything that's dynamic is handled by JavaScript. Sorry about that. Any questions so far? However, this is kind of traditional. Now we have more languages. So we have SASS, which stands for syntax awesome style sheet. And a, a very popular variant of it is called SDSS. And this is a new way of writing CSS. So you can define variables and like use arithmetic operators in this language, just like if you are writing programming language. And there is also a new language to JavaScript, which is called TypeScript. And we will talk a little bit more about these two. So JavaScript is a language that all browsers understand. However, it do not have static typing. So, so you, you, you will run into some problems. You can only get the error when you actually run the website. You cannot get it like at compile time. So then Microsoft invented TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, but it adds additional syntax for types to help you catch errors before you actually deploy your web app. So it's actually ranked the second most loved programming language, and it's also adopted by almost all the big companies and startups. So today we'll be using TypeScript. But don't worry if you don't have experience yet. It's almost JavaScript, but with syntax sugar for types that can actually help you write better program. So there are four major web frameworks for developing front-end web application. There are Angular, React, Vue, and there's this one that's pretty new and it's getting extremely popular. But currently, Angular and React are two of the web frameworks that's adopted by most of the companies. And we will talk more about these two. So Angular is very popular. It's created at Google and it's a full-fledged web framework. It includes everything you need to build a front end. However, React is the most popular one. It's created at Facebook, but it's very lightweighted. It has uh, smooth learning curve, you can get started quickly, but it's not a full-fledged framework. So you will need a lot of third-party libraries to, if you want to scale it up. Uh, any questions? So 
So today we are going to create a React app. And there are generally two ways to create a React app. There is one tool called Create React App. Yeah, the name is called Create React App. And it helps you create React, a React App. So, and there is also a new tool called Vite. And Vite is pretty new. It's actually done by the Vue team, which is a search framework to show down the shows in the previous slide, but it also supports React and it's blazingly fast. So when you well, if you create React app, you need to create React app. When you run the program, you need to go through the compile process and it works. Sorry. Yeah, so for create React app, it's a traditional way of doing it. So when you compile it, you need to like bundle all your JavaScript, build it to like support browser, different browsers. However, using Byte or Git, it's very fast. So today we are gonna use this. And, and now let's get started. So first you can go to this website, simply reactworkshop.react.app and uh, here are the instructions. And you, if you, you can like, we will go through this and I will also explain some concepts. So yeah. So the first step is we need to generate the React app using Beat. So here is the command. So I will copy it. And open up the terminal. And if you have Node.js installed, then it will. Oh. Yeah, so now it creates a it creates a React app for text evaluator. So now we can go to this directory. around NPF install. So this will install all the dependency required to build and run your website. Everyone on the same page? Can we continue? Yes. Yeah, so now let's open the project we create. So I usually use VS code, so you can type code space dot and it should open a VS code window. And now let's actually run it. So you can open a terminal inside VS code and type npm run step. And then it will show you a link here. You can press go and then click the link. And now you can see the website. So this is pretty simple website in the template. So you can click here. Yeah, it's just a basic counter. And as you can see, it's almost does not compile like it spins up the website instantly when you hit MTM run app, but that's not the case for create React. App. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Uh, this one? Okay. Um, 
So what's the question? Oh, so the command is NP and raw step. Question. Mm -hmm. npm start so yeah so you can check all the npm scripts available in the package start system so in the project uh, in, the, in this project that's generated by git we do not have a start script so we could only use npm that that is here yeah we have to create some phrase when I have to do this and then yeah, So now let's open the, so. Okay, so now we want to add this project to source control using Git and GitHub. So Git and GitHub is not only for like backing up your project files in the cloud, so you can get access to it on other computers or by others. Uh, the most important function about it is version control. So version control is basically saving different states of your current project. So if you mess something up, you can always return to your previously state to state. And this is more powerful than just save, undo, or redo in all the editors like in Word, Excel, or in VS Code, because it can save the state. The state contains all the files in the directory. And also, even if you close your laptop, open it somewhere else, all the states are still there. So that's the benefit of using Git. So now let's add our project to GitHub. So if you're using VS Code, you can go here. There is a source control button. And just click initialize repository. And now it will create a git repository for us. And here we can type git create react. So this is a message. So it can, like later, if you want to return to a previous state, you can refer to this message to know what you are doing in each step. So after you type the message, you can click the tick mark here to make the commit and click publish changes. And now, if you are logging with GitHub, it will automatically let you click the repository. You can type in the name as you want. And here I will just change it and click publish to GitHub private repository. And now if you go to github.com and logging, you will see your projects there. Any questions? Are you on the same page? Oh. Okay. Oh, so yeah, if this is the first time you use Git, uh, you need to run the, these two commands here. It's in the instruction. So here, if this is the first time you use Git, you just send by the username and the name and email using these two commands. And to make things easier, I just use the email with the same email you use for GitHub. Any other question?
Okay, let's continue. So now what we'll do is we'll first delete the template it generates and start from scratch. So first let's delete the app.css file here. And also delete everything inside app.css. And now we will write some simple code to create a hello world kind of app. So I will first write export equals function app. And you can copy the code from the instruction manual if you don't want to type. So, and you can also open your windows side by side, so you can always see the result instantly as you type the code. So, as you can see, currently we have uh, so currently we have function that returns the function of HTML. So when you see like you see in triangle brackets, it's HTML, and it will define the the type of component we will display on the web page. So here I put a div. So div is just a, like a division. So and inside it we put h one. H one stands for heading one. So here is it. And then we can also add a paragraph. So so paragraph is P. So you can put here. And and we can also add something else like a text box and a button. It's really hard to type, so I will just paste it. Now we have a heading, we have a paragraph, we have a text box, and we also have a button. And you can type anything here and you can click the button, but it will do that. Um, any question? Um, so TS stands for TypeScript. X is a React extension. So yeah. So if we do not include the X, we won't be able we won't be able to mix HTML and TypeScript in a single file. But uh, in React, we usually do this. So yeah. So that's why it's TS. Any other question? But our current UI looks very boring. So especially the button and the text box, they look really ugly. So now we are going to use material design components to make some beautiful. So first we will install the MUI material design component. So you can open another terminal by clicking this split terminal button here. In this way, you will not close the original terminal and here you can make this larger and now you can copy and paste the command from instruction And wait for it to download and install the components. And I will still open it side by side. And now let's replace our 
button with the material button. So first we need to import what we installed. So we can do import. Button. I think I made a typo here. And then let's replace this button with the uppercase button. Now look the style of the button changes. Now we have a beautiful animation here. And we can also add the variant. This is another style of the button. So and thing has like this is called property effect. So you will put the property name and then equals and then the property value. And there it is just one property of the button. And we will see other properties later. Any questions? Okay, and then, then we will do the same thing to replace the text box. So I will modify the import. and replace the input with text. Now we get a beautiful text box here. It also has some little animations. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So if you uh, if you have that problem, you can go to the terminal here and press Control C and just use Y and then use the up arrow key to rewrite it. And it should work. Any 
Oh, so that's a very brief introduction to HTML. And now we are going to move on to CSS. So we are going to create a background with color gradient. So to define a CSS, we first need to create a CSS file. So let's create a file inside SRC folder and call it app.module.css. And remember the file we deleted is called app.css. But here we just have a board. And this is different. When we just have a module, this CSS is isolated from other CSS. Which means when we if we work with a lot of files, if you want to build a large project where we work with a lot of files, you'll have a lot of CSS files. And if you use modules of CSS, that CSS will just be applied to the corresponding CSX file. But if we do not use modules.css, it will be applied to all the components. Uh, not necessarily, but it's good to keep it the same. Yeah, later we will use in course statement to specify the effect. Well, how, how do you make sure that this app on the Yeah, yeah. Later we will like write it in course statement in CSX and we'll see why. Okay, and then let's copy this CSS here. So we cannot see an event now because we just define the style sheet, but we also need to connect it with the actual component. So we will import the CSS to our TSX. And then we will remove the H1 and P tag and replace it with new code that uses the CSS we define. And now we get a useful gradient here. So let's go back and check our CSS. So first, we, sorry. So first there is the online screen, we define the text online center, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Now our text is centered. And we define our background gradient here, background on the linear gradient. And we define the direction and also the two colors. And here we also define the heading. So the padding defines the height here and here. So we put two values for it. The first value is the top padding and bottom padding. The second value is the left and right. Currently, we do not need to define the left and right padding, so we just leave it zero. Any questions? Okay, now let's go back to the TSX. So here we create a few div, and this is how we apply the style defined in the CSS. We use class name property and set that to styles from header. And where is styles defined? It's defined where we import it here. So this is how we connect the module CSS to the specific element. And here we also add the inline style. So besides writing CSS in a CSS file and import like this, you can also write CSS within HTML like this. So you can use the style property and equal to the CSS Any questions? Okay, and now similarly, 
we will also add another CSS for our material car. So let's copy and paste the CSS for the car. And we will replace our text field and button. So Everyone on the same page? So here the CSS is a little bit complex. So first we define this display flex. So this will enable a feature called flex box. And the unit design basically the container we apply this attribute to to become a container and you can and we set the flex direction to be column, which means all the elements inside the car will be like aligned from top to the bottom. And then we set the max width. So the max width is, as the name suggests, the maximum width it can go up to. So if we enlarge this window, you can see the material card will stop growing. It's a specified pixel. And this is a pretty important property for responsive design. And then here's the heading and the margin. So the margin is a space outside the border. So heading is the space between the border and the content inside the container. Margin is the space outside the border. So you can see the margin is 54 pixels in here. And the second, and as same as the penny, the first value defines the margin for the top and bottom. The second value defines the left margin and right margin. So you can see here when we make this larger, we have equal margin on two sides to make this card center, and that's why we set that to one. Any question? Okay, so the previous steps are just like a basic introduction to HTML and CSS. And now comes the very essential part of React. So now what we need to do is here we have a text box and while the user types an expression, we'll display the latex preview here and evaluate the result here. So first we need to listen to the listen to the changes of the input in the text box. And then we need to store the state of the expression. And then we will use that state to display the preview and extract. So let's first import a couple of things. And then we will define a state. And here we use a React tool called view state. And we send the initial value to the empty string. And by the way, in TypeScript or JavaScript, the single code and double code are the same. So you can do by the way. And then we get two part wise expression, one is set expression. So this is a getter, this is a setter. So if you are, if you are familiar with object already program, you can just consider this a getter, this is a setter. So when you use when you call this red foot, you get a get a function and get a function. 
And now what we want to do is when the user input changes, we want to update the state by calling the set expression and we'll set the value of the expression to the value in the set box. So we will create the event handler function. And Then we need to connect our event handler to the text box. So we need to add a if add a property here. We can add on change. And we will set that to the name of the function we created. So the basic logic is when the when the user input changes, we will call the handle input change function we define. And the function we define is here. And when it calls the function, it will also pass a parameter. And you can see the type here. The type is a change in that function saying an input element. And you can get the value inside the expression. You get the value inside the textbook by so using the textbook properties of value. And then we will update the state by calling the center set to change. So just to verify that the state is actually being updated. We can display our state here. We can replace this hard coded string with uh, curly braces and put it in the here. Now, when we type stuff, the best to it. So when we type something, we trigger the on change event handler, which calls the handle input change function, which updates the state, and updates the state is really nice Any questions? Are you on the same page? Okay, and now oh. Oh. So we define our state uh, here. We have a getter and setter, and we set it when the input changes, and we display it here. So the express and set express or expression, the expression. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are variables. Uh, yeah, so in JavaScript, everything is an object. So this is a expression, is, this is a screen object, this is a function object. Yeah, you, it, it is a variable. But this variable is a special variable, this is a React loop. So actually, when you run the function again, the state will proceed. That's why we don't just use like cos exr equals f and we use use state. Yeah. Uh, use state is a React hook. So basically, it saves the state even when the function exits. So it's like when you use use state, you get the reference to the actual story. A good question. It will initialize it when app function is being called for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, it will yeah, it will end the memory when app is called the first time. And the next time when it called the use state will just return the reference to the Yeah. 
good question. Okay, and now we will install a third party library to actually display the text query. So let's copy the command from the instruction. And again, we need to import something here. Then we can replace this time with the state text. And now if we type some types on the specific expression, for example, SQRT. Any question? And here in the code, so if you're familiar with latex, like this expression should be surrounded by, like, uh, if you want it to be on, like, if you want it to be on the center, you can surround it with like two pair of dollar signs. And so these two and these two are just latex in text. However, this dollar sign is a string configuration. In JavaScript. Okay. So, yeah. Any questions? Uh, can you go back to the import? Import? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can you put latex instead of the current method? Latex? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So, in JavaScript, there are a lot of different ways to import stuff. And uh, it's here are two ways. One is using curly braces, one is without curly braces. And there is actually another way that's using required function. And the, the difference is this if you don't use a curly braces, the curly braces is not optional or something when you import minor thing, it's actually different. So if you use this syntax without curly braces, the latex should be the default export from this package. If it's not the default, then you have to put the curly braces, even if you just import twice. So, like here, we define export default function app. So, if you check the if you check the main.tsx, you can see where we import app, we do not have a curly braces. You can experiment that if you delete the default keyword, then you have to put the credit braces here. Any other questions? And of course, one module can only have one default export and multiple other exports. Okay, so let's continue. And now we will install another package to evaluate the latex expression. So let's copy the command. Okay. And this time we will do something extra before we import it here. So we need to create a TypeScript declaration file. So nowadays, the like the modern modules, they should have this declaration file inside their packages, like React and like the previous package, like MUS Ethereum or 
React this as next, so we can import them directly into TypeScript. However, this fact is pretty old, and it do not it's not written in TypeScript, and it also does not contain the type declarations. So we need to declare the we need to like give the compiler like what the module looks like. So it can help us check type errors. So we will create a file. we will create a file called value text.ts. And then we can import it in TSX. Now we'll create another function just to avoid throwing around time errors. So just if we don't throw the wrong time errors, then it will not continue executing the following code and then we handle it explicitly. So we will just kind of handle it. We will not display any error messages, but we will return all the bytes instead of storing an error when the expression is not received. And this is necessary because when you type you might your expression might be in some incomplete state like this, and we don't want the website to break. So we haven't finished typing. So that's why we just written on the bind. And now let's call this function to display the results. Okay, and now we can type any expressions here. We can even include a fraction. And here we use a double question mark. So this is a shorthand notation. So if I write it in a uh, regular notation, it should be says equal 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 undefined. And if it's undefined, we use empty string. If it's not, then we use the value itself. So if I write it completely, it should be something like this. Yeah, but this is pretty long and it's pretty hard to read. So, like, if it's not defined, then it's empty string, otherwise, it's uh, expression itself. So, that's why we use this double question mark. So the whole the value of the whole expression will just be the value of the expression before the two question mark if it's not undefined or it's not known. If it's normal undefined, it will use the value after the double question mark as a value for the whole expression. Any questions? Around the same page. And also, this is like the TypeScript syntax. So, if you just remove all the types here, it's JavaScript. And in TypeScript, you don't need to do this, it also works. But then the compiler does not know 
the time for it. So when you go, if you use it at other time, you will not store any compile time error. But if you explicitly tell the expert entire life to the string, this is double or undefined, then when you use it in a like unsafe way, it will complain. Okay, now let's actually get this app deployed to the internet so everyone can access it. So first we need to install the Firebase tool. And I already have this installed, so we'll just run it again. I will run how to run it here. Give me a thumbs up when you finish installing. Yeah, you can install you can install it locally, you can install it the upper is B. And then you will need to run npx firebase login. And the npx stands for no package executions. It's not necessary if you are on Mac or Linux. If you install it globally, it's in software. So do install it either locally or if you're on Windows, you have to prefix the command with MPX. And let me know when you are done with this step. Okay. Right And now we will do MPX five base edit. And now it asks you, you are about to initialize the public project in this directory. I will ready to proceed and we can. And we can either either use Y or just press enter. And now it's now it asks us to select the speaker. We will just use the slide this button, and we will select this one. I press the space bar, and then press enter. Now it asks us to create an option. We will choose create a new project. And now we, we can come up with any ID we want. And what would you like to call your project default to your project ID and let's just use the default option.
Okay, if you get that error, you can go to firebase.google.com and click go to console. And if it's the first time using it, it might ask you to accept some license and after you've done that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you cannot use your agency Davis email uh, because the school has disabled access to Google developer. So maybe that's why. Oh yeah, maybe the um, yeah, maybe the product app is not. Um, oh, you can skip this then. That's right. Yeah, there was some. So, yeah, I believe maybe so. Maybe it's because it's not as high. Yeah. Yeah. So the project app should be globally unique. So. Uh, no, I think you have to create one. Yeah, you have to do that. Okay. Another question. Now it asks us for the public directory. In our case, it will be DIST. That's uh, like build out the directory for heat and configure a single page app to uh, use Y and set up automatic field and deploys. Yes. Now, here we need to put in our GitHub repository. So let's go to GitHub. So let's go to the GitHub of the, like the repository created when you complete the statue and it asks for a username slash the project name. So you can just copy it from your URL. Yes. Now 
now it asks to set up workflow widget. And for this script, we can keep the default. Good. Oh, and here, like if you use the so if you're, you can check what branch name is here. If it's name, you can keep the default. If it's something else, just type in whatever branch name you have here. Now we can see that file based UI help us create a lot of files. Here is the GitHub action workflow. And it also contains some information about the Firebase hosting configuration. And now we just need to commit and push our code to GitHub. And the website will be automatically deployed by Firebase Hosting and GitHub Actions. So we can go here again and we can type finish and click the commit icon here and click sync changes. Any questions so far? And now if we refresh page, we can see the small dot here. It means uh, there is a workflow running. We can just click this dot, see details. And we can see the GitHub server is compiling our Google. And the nice things about using this way for deployment is that every time when you merge a branch into your default branch, which is main our case, it will run automatically on the cloud. So you don't need to compile it. You don't need to build it on your local laptop. And it's also very good for like uh, team cooperation. Because this cloud environment is kind of your reference environment. It will do a clean install of the dependencies and do a clean build. It says fail, but let me try. Okay, it actually works. Um, can you see the page? Yeah, just need to click some of the UI. Okay, any questions? Okay, so this completes our workshop, but there's one more thing. 
So I'm the founder of the startup Scareco.com. So this is a new website to help you do your scale efficiently. So you just need to give the courses to make it safe, set your scheduling preferences, set the time, the structure, scheduling, and revenue. We'll consider all factors holistically and generate spread schedule for you. And you can then export it to UC Data Scale Builder or Google Center. So you can try it out today at schedule.com. And we are also recruiting. So we have our five of our software engineering positions open as well as other design and marketing positions. You can check them out at join.scandal.com. Uh, no. We are currently still like, uh, we have, oh, let me actually stop the recording.